I am in need of an op-amp tester that can test single, dual, and quad op-amps. I looked at a few on the market, and they're kind of expensive for what they are, and the few that I looked at don't test this very specific op-amp that I'm currently working with, which is a TL082. Uh, so I need it specifically for that. So I went online and I just googled op-amp tester, because testing an op-amp really isn't that hard. You just dump a signal into it and see what happens. And I stumbled across this very old op amp tester from 2011 and I gave it a quick once over and it looked pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this information and import it into Eagle. Now this is the schematic it's the exact same thing as the one that I just showed you on the web page I take no credit for this schematic this is one I found online I'll link it in the description and uh, share all the files online as well I only added a few different changes to this I'm not using a 9 volt battery system or two 9 volt batteries I'm not using that and I also added an LED on the oscillator so that way we can see that the oscillator is working. Uh, so the idea behind this is the oscillator, which is this IC right here, will generate a wave and dump it into the inputs of all of these op amps, which will be just IC sockets. And uh, that will give you an output on their output in the form of LEDs. If the LEDs turn on and off, the op amp is good and so on. The original circuit board uses nothing but through-hole components, but I thought it would be fun to use as much surface mount components as I could. I could use surface mount LEDs, but I really like the look of the 3mm through-hole LEDs, so I'm keeping those. And uh, the circuit board is as follows. It looks pretty nice. Everything is small and compact. All of our components outside of the LEDs and the IC socket and the switch are mounted on the back of the PCB to give the face of it a, a much cleaner look, which I kind of like. I did this so that way it cleans up the front of the PCB because that's what you're going to be looking at the most. Uh, and yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. We have our oscillating IC over here, the status LED for that, two voltage rail LEDs. Um, it is possible for one of the voltage rails to be missing and you can get some wonky signals, so these two LEDs are very nice to have a single pole double throw on off switch and our voltage input pads over here and up top is nothing but the sockets that will be used for testing op amps and the LEDs that go along with them. Since we're on the subject of PCBs, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. They offer a variety of PCB services ranging from standard PCB to rigid flex. Simply upload your Gerber files for a quick build time and amazing quality PCBs. In addition to PCBs, they also offer CNC, injection molding, and 3D printing services, which I'll definitely be using in the future. Definitely check out their website, and thank you so much PCBWay for sponsoring my channel. PCBWay delivered these awesome PCBs, so let's go ahead and solder all the components on the backside of the PCB first. The best way to solder surface mount components such as these resistors is to solder one pad, slide the component into that solder, then solder the other pad. Now we can solder the double pole double throw switch into place. This is responsible for turning on and off the negative and positive supply. Next we can solder in all the IC sockets. The final components that need to be soldered are a lot of 3mm LEDs. To finish this project off, I designed and 3D printed this enclosure that requires no hardware and this battery pack. And now it's time to assemble the 3D printed battery pack by adding copper tape to act as our terminals. I didn't want to use 9 volt batteries for this project because I thought they were too big and weird to work with when it came to 3D printing a small enclosure, so I decided to use coin cell batteries instead. I know coin cell batteries are a weird choice, and it's even weirder when you need 6 of them, but they're pretty cheap in my area and they're small enough to meet my needs for a small enclosure. 
That being said, you can still use 9 volt batteries if you want to. Now we can mount the battery pack on the inside of the case using some super glue. And we can run the wires from the battery pack to the PCB and solder it in place. Load up that weird cell holder with our six cells, keeping in mind the polarity of them. And snap the PCB into the enclosure, put our oscillator chip in and see if it works. So we get our two power LEDs and our oscillation LEDs, so let's go ahead and test this thing out. Here's a good quad op amp. As you can see, it's oscillating and pulsing the LEDs, turning them on and off. Here's a good dual op amp, and as you can see, it's working as well. I don't have a single op amp on hand, so you have to forgive me for that. Let's go ahead and put in some bad op amps and see what happens. As you can see, the red LEDs don't turn on, and the yellow ones don't turn all the way off, and they pulse high, so this is a bad op amp. And as you can see, the LEDs are acting really weird, so we do have a bad quad op amp. Be sure to check the link in the description of this video for a link to PCBWay where you can find the bomb, still files, and Gerber files for this project. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.